As the darkness rolls into my room, I was busy living my life wrapped in my own compromise. Mm. And I could see couldn't open my eyes I found myself behind enemy line and all the blood that flows from your cross push back the hand of darkness recovered all the ground I've lost. He broke every chain, washed away all Satan's claim. And I'm here now because of blood still flows. Praise God. As the darkness rolls into my room, mm -hmm. I was busy living my life wrapped in my own compromise, and I couldn't see. Couldn't open my eyes Then I found myself behind an me line And all oh, the blood that flows from your cross Push back the hand of darkness Recovered all the ground I've lost. It broke every chain, washed away all Satan's flame. And I'm here now because of blood still flows. Thank you, Jesus. was in a great war mm -hmm. that this world is not my own see my life is not my own see the enemy he is real and my soul
for your mercy never fails me all my days have been held in your hands from the moment that I wake up until I lay my head I will sing of the goodness of God this whole my life your goodness is running out running after it's running after me yes. your goodness is running out running after me running after with me. my life laid out with my life laid down i surrender now i give you everything your goodness is running after running it's after running me after loving Father and our God who art in heaven. One more time we seek your divine direction, your divine strength, your divine guidance, and the empowerment of your spirit. We pray God you will visit every country, every island, every continent, and you would give the wind a mighty voice, and you would take the word tonight to ladies and gentlemen watching across the globe, from as far as India and Africa, from the islands of the Caribbean and Trinidad and Tobago, St. Vincent and the Grenadines in Barbados, in Guyana. Oh, gracious God, we pray that your Holy Spirit will carry the word tonight to every young man, every young lady, every boy, every girl, every grown man, whether they are watching on their smartphone, on their television, a big screen, or listening on the radio from... Crown Mountain in St. Thomas, to all the islands covered by the radio station across Canada, give the wind a mighty voice tonight for the glory of your name and the saving of our souls. For this is our asking in Jesus' name, and let God's children say, Amen. I don't know about you, but as a boy, I used to love moonshine. You, you, um, you, you Caribbean people, moonshine tonight? Now don't look at me like as if you don't know what moonshine is. Uh, uh, that's where Joseph met Orchid, don't you? Are you listening to me? Moonshine tonight, come back with dance and sing. I was in Canada preaching and, and it, was, it was fascinating to me that at, at minutes to 10 p.m. the sun was still up. I thought it fascinating that the sun in all of its brilliance, uh, uh, beautiful sunshine, at minutes to 10 o'clock, you know, I, uh, I'm used to, to, to nightfall coming on before I start preaching. And so I am conducting this tent campaign in, in, in Dunn's view uh, a little bit, some um, hour and a half out of the town and stuff. And so I stayed by my guests and uh, for the first week or two, they drive me, but they felt now that I knew my way, so they left me with the car. They were gone to work. And so I'm home reading and listening to music and reading the Bible and reading stuff. And I'm watching the sun, forgetting that I am not in Montego Bay. I'm watching the sun and uh, waiting for the sun to start tipping down. Then I'll know it's time to get out for meeting. Then the house phone began to ring and they call, Pastor, how far away are you? The Lord is my shepherd. I just love Canadian Highway. Are you listening to me? Uh, they left me with a happy car, and you know I have a happy right foot. Uh, I couldn't tell them where I was, but I got there just about the right time. I love moonshine. And, and there's something amazing about, about God. He said he, he, he allowed the sun to rule the day and the moon to rule the night. And, and uh, when it's full moon, and full moon comes in every country. Bright, beautiful moonshine. What would you do if, if one of these dark nights, I told you, I grew up afraid of the dark. Before I got to know God, before I got to know the Bible, I, they taught me about the, this issue, uh, 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 and I know that Denise know about it, that, that when somebody dies, if the person wasn't a Christian, him going to get up out the grave three days after you bury him. And bless your heart, there were some folk I know who die a certain way. And my mother never had any trouble getting me to stay in the house. 
until a few weeks afterwards and I think that that duppy now got tired of walking. What would you do if the sun would ever come out in the middle of the night? Our subject tonight, our topic tonight, sunshine in the middle of the night. I love Isaiah, so let's start tonight with Isaiah. We're going to go to Isaiah chapter 60. That's Isaiah 60, and then we're going to jump from Isaiah to Revelation. But let me start with Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 2. For behold, the darkness. Behold, he didn't say behold, darkness. He said, behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee and his glory shall be seen upon thee. He speaks of darkness here as, as a time when the world will be in cataclysmic confusion and, and trouble of all kinds. A time when, when humankind will be searching for answers and groping in the dark. A time when, when, when our wisdom will fail. A time when science won't be able to give us all the stuff we're searching after. A time when, when youthful vim and vitality will, will fail. A time when feminine charm and beauty will avail nothing. A time when there'll be so much trouble in the land. Behold the darkness, the darkness, the darkness shall cover the earth. A time when governments will be searching for answers. Behold, the darkness will cover the earth. Behold, humankind will be thrown in such cataclysmic confusion. And we've had trouble in our world. But I've come to help you understand tonight, beloved, that in the darkness, in the midnight of your encounter, the light of God's mercy can shine. In the midnight of your dismal circumstances. I got a text today and I, I, I spent some time praying for the person and I responded. And I, I, I won't call her name, but someone said, uh, uh, you spoke to me last night. Truth is, I was contemplating killing myself and killing all my children. But you spoke to me and I texted, thank God for the gospel. I didn't talk to you, God did. Mercy brought a light in the midst of that darkness. I can't fully imagine what you must have been going through with all of the stress and all of the challenge. But to, I, I thank God that, that, that the light of mercy shone through in your darkness last night. Would you say amen? I thank God Almighty for the power of the gospel. Paul said, I am not ashamed of the gospel. It is the power of God to salvation. There are folk tonight across the islands and the continents. There are folk tonight. I may never see you on this side of Jordan, but bless the Lord God, I hope to meet you in the kingdom of glory when the darkness of sorrow and death shall be over and done. Thank God for the light of truth. The Bible said, the darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people. Tonight, I want to talk to you about the second coming of Jesus Christ. One in every 25 verses in the New Testament speaks of the second coming of Jesus. The last book of the Bible in the first chapter, Revelation chapter 1. In that amazing book, the book of last things, he said, Behold, he cometh. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him. Every eye shall see him. And also they which pierce him, and all kindred of the earth shall wail because of him. Beloved, I want to pause here. It's not explicitly clear in the text, but I'm sure you can reason it out when the text says, Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him. It also said, and they also which pierced him. Now, if the text here by that clause is in reference to those who physically and literally nailed him to the cross, then it must be that God will raise them up just to see the Son of Man come and he will strike them dead by the brightness of his coming. I'm going to go on tonight. You want to hear the word of God. Matthew 25 is one of the most amazing uh, chapters in the Bible talking about the kingdom of God. The Bible said in Matthew 25 verse 1, Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins. Right here in this chapter, you are familiar with the Bible's language in the Old Testament and the New Testament. 
God uses the symbol of a woman to represent the church. Are you listening to me? I said in the Old Testament and in the New Testament, Old Testament says your maker is your husband. Old Testament talks about a God being married to you. New Testament said the same thing. Paul said, I am jealous over you for I have exposed you as a godly woman, a chaste virgin, preparing you for the coming of the Lord. Beloved, the Bible says here, the kingdom of heaven is likened unto ten virgins which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. Here is a parable that talks about people preparing for the coming of the Lord. There are folk tonight who may scoff at the idea, but I hope to God by the time I get done, it shall be clear to you. The next verse says, five of them were wise and five of them were otherwise. Listen to me carefully. This is a time where God wants all people around the world to come back to the word. We told you last night, you can trust the Bible. We told you last night, my friend, it is designed by God to be a lamp to your feet and a light to your path. We told you last night, the Bible is God's word. We showed you in unmistakable certainty, evidence beyond reasonable doubt, that God in his word outlined the future hundreds and hundreds of years in advance so that you may know he is the living God. And the Bible said all scripture given by God's inspiration is profitable. I told you last night the Bible did not come by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Here in this 25th chapter, here in the chapter, the Word of God is intending to help us understand we've got to be in a state of readiness. And listen to me carefully, God makes it clear that whether you are in church or out of church, we go see him come. Hello, somebody. But here, let me talk to, to folk, uh, uh, church folk. And church folk here means all kind of church folk. Uh, uh, Hindu and Muslims and, and Indians and Jews and Christians. Uh, uh, Anglicans and Catholics and Baptists and Methodists and Pentecostals and Adventists and people of all kinds, of all denominations. The chapter seeks to get our attention. It says, they that were... Five of them were wise and five were foolish and they that were foolish took their lamps but no oil with them. Let's run to the verse and I'll come back over it. And while the bridegroom tarried. Now if the text says they that were foolish took their lamps but didn't take any oil with them then the implication is they that were wise took their lamps and took oil with them. The lamp represents your life. The oil represents the power of the Holy Spirit. Are you listening to me? The oil represents the Holy Ghost. The lamp represents our life. God is not looking for a pretty lamp. God is looking for shining lights. Can I say it again? God is not looking for pretty lamps. God is looking for shining light. And here's something that's important. If the lamp has no oil going in it, the lamp will have no light coming out of it. If your life and my life does not have the power of the Holy Ghost flowing in our lives, connecting our hearts with God, ordering our lives in harmony with God's word, preparing our lives to live the way that God wants us to live. And I want to help you understand you by yourself and I by myself cannot live the life that God wants us to live. Now, 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 now. The only thing I do with dead people, I bury them. Uh, I, I, <laughs> Let me say it again. The lamp represents our lives. The oil represents the Holy Ghost. Unless we have the help of the Holy Ghost, we cannot live the way God wants us to live. And the thing that is amazing to me is that God says in the last days when darkness covers the land, in the last days I will pour out the Holy Ghost upon all flesh, upon sons and daughters, upon male and female. 
Young men shall see visions and old men shall dream dreams. There is no respect of persons, but we've got to understand there's got to be some leaning towards God. The Bible said the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. The wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. It means therefore that even while we are in church, we've got to ask God every day to order our steps in harmony with his word. It means therefore we can't be comfortable because every level brings new devil. And yesterday's righteousness, yesterday's faithfulness is never enough for today's challenges. Every level that God blesses you on, every step you climb, you've got to understand there are some new challenge but bless the Lord God he is ready and available to pour out the Holy Ghost wherever you are if you open your heart to him if you open your mind to him he's ready he's available he's able are you listening to me the wise took their oil in their vessels with their lambs and now here's here's the verse here's the verse this verse says and at midnight at midnight when their SARS and, and AIDS at midnight, when their COVID-19 and Omicron at midnight, when there's money trouble and, and failing marriages at midnight, when there are financial issues and, and crisis on the right and crisis on the left, at midnight, when there's suicidal ideation at midnight, when, the, when there's trouble on every side at midnight, when the power of money is failing and the power of human friendship is failing at midnight, when your health is failing at midnight, at midnight, when there's vice and wars and strife at midnight, when China is, is marshalling its aircraft and Russia is putting its air force close to and, and, and America is ordering ships near to a certain area at midnight at midnight when there's trouble on every side at midnight when they're crying peace and safety and sudden destruction is around the corner at midnight a cry was made Behold, the bridegroom cometh in this parable. The Lord God would help us understand his coming is going to be a time when there's great perplexity among the nations. His coming is going to be a time when homes are breaking up and crime is breaking out and thieves breaking in. The Lord is coming down. Are you listening to me? At midnight... This prophecy is intended to help us understand there is no salvation in simply being a church member. We've got to have a living relationship with the living God. We've got to ask the Lord God to order our steps in harmony with the word of the Lord God. We've got to come back to the Bible. Hear me, hear me, hear me at midnight. At midnight. When folk are dying by the thousands every day at midnight. When hospitals are overcrowded and cemeteries are overcrowded at midnight. At midnight. A cry was made in the middle of your trouble. In the middle of your storm. A cry is made. Behold, the bridegroom cometh. The Bible said in such an hour as you think not. The Son of Man comes. And Jesus said as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be. They were eating and drinking and marrying and given in marriage. And I asked myself, what's wrong with eating God? Especially if what you're eating is some whole wheat dumplings and green callaloo. What's wrong? But listen to me. He said, listen, the time is coming when folk are focusing only on their material satisfaction. There's nothing wrong with eating and drinking and marrying. And I wish to God that some other folk would get married. Don't you know, God never intended for us to live shocking up. Are you listening to me? So if tonight you are living with somebody and you're not yet married, I pray the Lord God, you'd bring your life in harmony with the word of God. But hear carefully. Listen carefully. The text says at midnight, 
in the midst of trouble. Now, I want you to look closely. It says, Behold, the bridegroom comes. Notice, if you will, the text before this says, While the bridegroom tarry, they all, how many? Now look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, don't look at me. They all slumbered. Hey, the wrong neighbor. Look at the next neighbor and say, neighbor, don't look at me. They all slumbered. They all slumbered and slept. Can I talk with you? There are some trouble that affects church people and non-church people. COVID knows no church membership. Are you listening to me? COVID knows no social barrier, no ethnic boundary, no cultural boundary. COVID knows, that COVID doesn't care whether you are the president of the USA or the president of the poorhouse. Admit while the bride groom tarry, the trouble of earth's last days will affect all the inhabitants of the earth. Are you listening to me? But the difference is in the midst of darkness, somebody ought to have some extra oil. Can, can, I, can I break this down with you? The Bible said when the cry was made, the wise jumped up and they had something to fall back on. I'm glad that, that if you've got Jesus on your side, you may still have trouble. You may still have liquid frustration, but you've got a rock to stand on. Are you listening to me? I'm glad that, that in a world like this, when, when you can't stop COVID, sometimes you, with the best of what you do, you still get sick, but you've got a rock to stand on. Are you listening to me? So you can say, you can say like David, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because the Lord is your shepherd. Let, let me run with the text. Let me run with the text. The Bible said, then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps, all of them, but the wise had extra oil. In the midst of trouble, the wise had the guidance of the Holy Spirit. In the midst of darkness, the wise had help that God promised. The help is promised to everyone, but not everyone made use of it. Now listen to this, listen to this. In, in the midst of trouble, you can borrow my Bible, but you can't borrow my relationship with God. You can borrow my hymnal, but you can't borrow my praise. So, so here comes the foolish ones and they said to the wise give us some of your oil lend us some of your oil and the wise one said no you've got to go to the source of oil for yourself what did they say the text says you've got to go to them that sell and buy for yourself. What did Isaiah said? Isaiah said, come, come buy wine and milk without money and without price. He's saying, come, come to the source to get the stuff that life can't do without. Come to the source that money can't give you. And so the foolish one said to the wise one, give us some of your oil. They said, no. No, that's, that can't work. The text is intended to help us understand that, that, that if your father is a child of God or if your child belongs to God and parents you're not, you've got to understand God has no grandchildren. The Bible said as many as receive him, St. John 1 verse 12, to them he give the power to become the sons of God. You've got to to have your own blessed assurance. You've got to have your own relationship with God. You've got to obey the Bible for yourself. There is no salvation in simply being a church member. You've got to walk in the plain thus said the Lord God. The Bible has got to be a lamp to your feet and a light to your path. You've got to have your own life changing relationship with the living God for yourself. The lamp may be pretty. I may have on brown suits and shine shoes but I've got to have Christ in my heart. I've got to lean on Jesus. I've got 
preacher though I am, I can't be saved by preaching. I am saved only by the blood of Jesus Christ. I am kept only by the power of the Holy Ghost. And you and I have got to pray every day. Order my steps in your word of God. When your job gets on the line, you've got to pray. Order my steps in your word of God. When your marriage is in trouble, you've got to pray. Order my steps in your word of God. When as a youngster and you are challenged by drugs and sexual stuff and all kind of destructive stuff, you've got to pray. Order, order, order my steps. At midnight, when human strength is failing, at midnight, when the staff we can, we can be fancy with all of our facade and stuff but there comes some trouble that can strip us down to bare nakedness. Listen to me carefully. There comes a time when life circumstances will cut aside the fringes like, like, like the fig leaves that Adam used to cover himself. At midnight fig leaves won't do. At midnight church membership by itself can't do. At midnight, they needed the oil of the Holy Ghost. At midnight, when there's AIDS and SARS and COVID-19. At midnight, when there are incurable diseases. At midnight, when 20% of the people of the world live on 80% of the wealth of the world and 80% of the people have only 20% of the wealth. At midnight, when there's global tyranny. At midnight, when there's starvation everywhere. At midnight, when there's pestilence in diverse places. At midnight, behold the bridegroom comes. At midnight, sun shall break out in the darkness. At midnight, brighter, more glorious and luminous than a million noonday sun shall be the brightness of the coming of Jesus. And he said, let not your heart be troubled. John 14, verse 1, let not your heart be troubled. Well, why not Jesus? Can you see? There's trouble on my right and trouble on my left. What do you mean, let not your heart be troubled? Can't you see, Jesus, this world has been like it is? As it was in Noah's day, he wanted to remember. They were eating and drinking and marrying. They were doing good stuff. Let not mere good stuff keep you back from serving God. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. Let not your heart be troubled, because I go to prepare a place for you. I love this. I love this. Now let me tease you up. He said, let not your heart be troubled. I am going to prepare a place for you. And then he said, and if I go. Now, now that word if, is it suggesting some doubt? He just said, let not your heart be troubled. Now he said, if I go. You see, you ought to understand, he was dealing with folk who really had a challenge believing his word. Can I take you back over to, to their time? They walked with him. They walked with him for, for three and a half years. They, they heard him. They saw him heal the sick and raise the dead. But even at the point when he died, they had trouble. They had trouble believing. You know, we can go to church. We can claim religion and yet not have a relationship with Jesus. So after he was resurrected, you find them saying, they're walking now on the road. It says to, to where? I call it the road to discouragement, the road to depression, 
They're talking among themselves and, and Jesus now, the resurrected Jesus, joined them and said, what are you talking about? And they said, we're talking about the stuff that happened in Jerusalem. He said, what stuff? And, and they said, they were kind of faced, you know. They said, you must be the only stranger that don't know these things. We're talking about Jesus. We're talking about Jesus, the one who worked miracles. We, we watch him work miracles. We trusted it would have been he who should have redeemed Israel, but now he is dead. So he's talking to them. He is now going back. So he said, if I go, in other words, he had no doubt in his mind, but he wanted to plant this seed. So when he is being lifted up from the earth, they will remember, he said, listen, this same Jesus, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go, I will come again. I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there you may be also. I want to make a few points and then I'll close tonight. Some truth about Christ's second coming. I've heard some folks say it's going to be a secret rapture. And they pick the text that says two shall be in the bed. One is raptured and the other one is left. Can you imagine Darren and Adis in the bed and Darren is gone? That text has nothing to do with a secret rapture. It was talking about the preparation for the destruction of Jerusalem. But there is a spiritual lesson. It talks about individual preparation for the coming of the Lord. His coming, number one, is going to be literal. Are you listening to me? It's going to be a literal second coming. The Bible said this same Jesus the same one, he said in Titus 2 and verse 13, looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing, effulgent glory in the midst of darkness, sunshine. Are you listening to me? The sunshine of the coming of Jesus in the midst of darkness, the darkness of war and bloodshed and murder, the darkness of calamity, the darkness of, of all kind of destruction when man's cataclysmic explosion will be taking lives by the thousands. I wish I could tell you in World War II, 50 million persons died. Are you listening to me? That's more, that's 20 times the population of Jamaica. 50 million plus the issue of starvation and diseases and those who were maimed, who were left uh, nursing, life-changing wound. His coming, my friend, is going to be literal. He said, this same Jesus. But you also must understand it's personal. The same Jesus who was born in Bethlehem's manger. The same Jesus whom Pilate condemned to death. The same Jesus whom Roman soldiers nailed. The same Jesus, this same Jesus will come again. Are you listening to me? I'm running, I'm running fast tonight. This same Jesus, Acts chapter 1 and verse 11. This same Jesus who was taken up from you in heaven will so come in like manner. It's a literal personal second coming. What else can we learn about this? Let me run fast tonight. He's going to come in the clouds of glory. This same Jesus, the one that they prayed to and walked with, the one that, that, that they were sharing companionship with. The third point I make before I sit down is that not only will his coming be literal, not only will his coming be a personal coming, but it will be visible. Visible from as far in Australia to the other end of the globe. Are you listening to me? My favorite text, Revelation 1 verse 10 in that first chapter. My favorite text in that first chapter is verse 7. Every eye shall see him. A literal 
personal visible coming. Every eye shall see him. Behold, he comes with clouds. Beloved, let me tell you, it's not just any ordinary cloud. It's a cloud of shining angels. Are you listening to me? All of the angels in heaven will be accompanying Christ. Somebody said, you can count them. 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands. When you think that one angel has such glory, when you think, beloved, that on the Mount of Transfiguration, uh, Peter, James, and John saw the glory of Jesus when Moses went up to receive the Ten Commandments. Even though God veiled his face when Moses came down, his literal skin was shining in glory. Are you listening to me? Can you imagine thousands of angels surrounding Jesus? Can you imagine all the trumpets of heaven blasting across the globe? Can you imagine the trumpet sounding so loud, the mountains crumbling, the sea heaving and boiling? Behold, he is coming with clouds, literal, personal, visible coming. I'm running on, I'm running on. Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. Beloved, they shall see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Can I paint a picture on your mind? Can I, can I invite your imagination to walk with me? He's coming and all the nightclubs are still open. He's coming and the dance hall stuff is still going on. He's coming and the bands, uh, uh, whether it's daytime or midnight. If it's daytime, it'll make the sun look like darkness. Are you listening to me? If it's daytime, the glory of his coming. And the song says the marketplace is empty. No more traffic in the streets. All the builders' tools are silent. No more time to harvest wheat. Busy housewives cease their labor because the king is coming to the gate. At midnight, in the midst of human darkness, in the midst of human sorrow, God keeps his word. Are you listening to me? He's coming. He's coming. He's coming soon, I know. And the weary pilgrims will to glory go when the Savior comes again. Can I pass by the night? Can I stop by the bedroom of an aged sister? You've served God all your life. No, maybe cancer is taking its toll. You've served God all your life. Maybe COVID is shutting down your lungs. You've served God all your life. Or maybe you don't have any money in your pocket. Well, let me tell you something. He's coming. He's coming to put an end to human misery. He's coming. Oh, my friend lost his wife last week. And I used to go by her home. She has been a sickle cell patient ever since I met her. And Sharon sometimes in the midst of pain, uh, uh, she fought it bravely. And, and when the pain is gone, we would, she would laugh at herself because her favorite statement would be, what a pain, sir. What a pain, sir. In the midst of her pain. But bless the Lord God. Hear me. Whether you're watching me from Trinidad or Barbados or Tobago or, or Grenada or St. Lucia or Jamaica or Canada. When he comes, no more pain. No more sickle cells. No more cancer. No more money trouble. No more sickness. When he comes, the dark of your midnight will be gone sometimes some folk can see through their tears they can see through their emotional struggle and the only way they see out of their problems is to take their own lives they can't see through the stuff the misery and the mess and sometimes 
because they know they've done stuff that they had better sense in. Sometimes the most difficult part of the issue is that you know you could have done better. When you know you should have done better. But let me tell you something. You can't change it by beating upon yourself. You can't fix the past by yourself. There's something about this Jesus that tells me he justifies the sinner when the sinner confesses and surrenders his heart. He takes care of all your past sins. He gives you power in the present by the oil of the Holy Ghost. He keeps your lamp amidst the darkness. He keeps your lamp trim. Let me tell you something. The text says that, that they all slumbered and the devil knows all he's got to do is to keep on hitting us at the same spot and we'll slumber. We'll buck our toe. But if your mind is stayed on Jesus, Holy Ghost will climb down inside of you and reignite your flame. His coming is literal. His coming is visible. His coming is personal. His coming is glorious. And the best thing I want to tell you is this. When my, my, my great-grandmother loved her with all my heart, I'd run home, run my hand to her long flowing silver hair. She died at 99 years of age. And bless the Lord God, died of old age. But I look forward by the grace of God to see her coming up from that old cemetery in Burnt Savannah. How do I know that? The song says the mossy old grave where the pilgrims sleep shall be opened as wide as before. The Bible said in Hosea 14, I will ransom them from the grave. Hallelujah! When you die in Jesus. The Bible said, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord. The only way to die in the Lord is to live in the Lord. The only way to die in the Lord is coming as literal, it's personal, it's visible, it's audible. The trumpet shall sound. Bless the Lord God. I said the trumpet shall sound and the dead in Christ shall rise and we which are alive and remain shall be caught up. So the text says, I'm done. But let me read for you Revelation 16, 18. And there were noises. The King James said, there were voices and thunderings and lightnings and a great earthquake. When he rode on down through. Ah, there's a song that says, right on King Jesus. Right on King Jesus. In glory and majesty and power and victory. Right on when he came the first time, he came as a babe in Bethlehem's manger. They had no room in the inn for him. When he came, I hear shepherds said, Behold, we bring you angels, declaring the shepherds. Good news. When he came the first time, when he came the first time, they stretched him out on an old rugged cross. They fastened his hands and fastened his feet and the crowd mocked him. They mocked and jeered him. He could have called 10,000 angels, but this time he comes not as a babe in Bethlehem's manger. This time he comes not to be condemned by Herod nor Pilate. This time he comes as king of kings and lord of lords from Africa to America. Are you listening to me? There shall be thunderings and lightnings and a great earthquake. The mighty men and the great men, there shall not be an earthquake so great. Some will run to rocks and mountains. I'm done. The islands will flee. The prophet here paints a picture of cataclysmic explosion. Mountains crumbling, trumpet blasting, the earth breaking up, graves opening up because the dead in Christ will be getting up. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God and the dead in Christ. The dead 
in Christ. Some were sawn asunder. Some were burnt at the stake because of their obedience to God. The dead in Christ will rise first. I'm done. Are you ready for Jesus to come? He's coming when the world is at its midnight encounter. He's coming. As they sing tonight, I invite you to get extra oil in your lamp. Ask for the power of the Holy Ghost in your life. As they sing tonight, I invite you to trust in the Lord God with all your heart. As they sing tonight, I invite you to lean not you to your own understanding. He's coming. Touch a place He's coming in the midst of the world's inside. trouble. He's coming. He's coming in the midst of the trial of a broken world. Some will scoff at his word, but the Bible is true. Some will scoff, saying, where is the promise of his coming? But in such an hour as you think not, he comes. In such an hour as you think not, to hear from you he comes from your throne up above the glory of Jesus will outshine let me the see darkness your glory of human struggle that I've been the glory of Jesus that my soul will outshine the darkness of human misery oh, the glory of Jesus are you ready for Jesus to come Are you ready to stand in your place? Oh, Lord, the close Have you fought a good fight? Get, Are you standing for the right? Are you living in obedience the to the word of God? Of he's coming. Yes, yeah, man, he's coming. Lord, the signs declare you like pestilence in diverse places. Win. Through the wilderness, the signs declare it. I told you last night, Lord, we're down in the holy toes where the Bible said, So your glory is mixed with clay, deep within. iron and clay. Oh, Lord, it speaks of the divided nature of human kingdom, it speaks of the divided nature of the fragile peace of humanity. It speaks of the issue that governments may form alliances. Like At the end of World War II, the they gave birth to the United Nations. But now the United Nations have become the divided the nations. He's coming. Jesus, His glory will shine, shine brighter than the thousand noonday sun. And done. And I invite you tonight to prepare to meet your God. I invite you this night to get ready for the coming of Jesus. Your trouble will be over. No more cancer. No more prostate cancer. No more breast cancer. No more cervical cancer. No more liver cancer. No more brain cancer. No more pancreatic cancer. No more COVID. No more diabetes. No more glaucoma. No more cataract. No more money trouble. No more violence. No more bloodshed. No more injustice. No more racism. No more. No more, me, because he's coming to put an end to all of this. Oh, what a blessing Lord, the coming of Christ will be. Sunshine in the middle of human darkness. You, sunshine, the sunshine of his coming in the midst of the darkness Let of the night of humanity. And I challenge I've you tonight, prepare to meet the Lord God. Get ready, for in such an hour as you think not, 
the Son of Man comes. Jesus, Jesus shines bright. Our heads are bowed. And our eyes are closed. Our loving Father and our God, Lord in heaven. We come tonight, Lord, with a consciousness that our world is broken. Humankind have been trying for decades, for generations, to bring about a united world. Humankind have fought battles in the name of peace. Humanity is broken. We go after material things, God. But we discover with all the money we have, it can satisfy the longing in the heart. We go on the dance floor and we dance the night away. But when the music is over, our heart is still empty. God, we we tried food and pleasure. We've tried all the stuff we can set our minds to. But we are still empty and broken. We're glad to know that you're coming soon to put an end to human misery. We're glad to know God. The sickness will be no more. Financial trouble will be no more. Inequality will be no more. Pain will be no more. Emotional pain will be no more. Internal hemorrhage will be no more. Internal hurt will be no more. Thank you for the hope of your coming. Thank you, God. That your word is a lamp to our feet. Help us tonight, Jesus, to prepare for your second coming. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. And let God's children say, Amen. No, 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 can tell.